Holly headed back to where she had heard the horse's hooves earlier that evening, while Steve and Dave focused on the graveyard. Meanwhile, I found what I thought was a nice, quiet little spot at the rear of the church. Within minutes, however, I had one of my weirdest experiences yet as a paranormal investigator. So here, here, here's the crazy thing. I, I wasn't going to say anything because um, I'm the skeptical member of the team, but I've been talking with uh, my co-producer, Dale Stevens, and he and I have seen the exact same thing at different times in different places. So uh, that's, you know, trained as a lawyer is a story, and what I want is confirmation, and I've had it. And what uh, Dale described and what I've seen, uh, out of the corner of my eye, and then I looked over, it was over in this direction, and because the sky, there's trees and trees, and then there's sky in between, which allows you to, gives a backdrop of illu some illumination that you can see things. And it's, it's weird. I, I would describe it almost in a science fiction sense as if a door opened, so, you know, like this, you know, kind of a door opened, a shape formed. Uh, it was totally black and surrounded by the night sky, which is, is slightly il illuminated from a town off in this direction, I guess. And then as, as soon as it was there, it was, it was gone, maybe a second or, or two seconds, I suppose, afterwards. What I saw would have been the church is right over here. We've just sort of walked in more or less a straight line. And I was looking right in this direction. And here's the thing that I find a little freaky because I don't know if we'll show it in the episode or not, but Aaron and Dale, my uh, camera and, and, and audio guy here, were here with me earlier where we taped a little stand-up segment where I was talking about Holly and some other things. And this is exactly where I was standing. What I saw, this shadow, this doorway, whatever it was that was opening, happened I, right up here. So it occurred, whatever it was for me, you know, sort of in exactly the same place as I was standing what guys two hours ago maybe when we filmed that stand-up segment and so it was church over here and it's kind of like open like this and and that's the only way i can describe it my uh, my co-director producer dale stevens described it a little differently but we're talking about the exact same thing but the way my mind works it was like a a temporal a, a trans-dimensional door opening or something with just full of blackness as if the sky blacked out in that that section weird I gotta tell you, weird. Of all the episodes I've done, weirdest that and getting um, the thing in the St. Andrews Jail, two weirdest things I've seen. And I would have, I would have pocketed that, pocketed that one because that one was in a. It was just one of those weird things that if Dale hadn't told me that he'd seen the same thing in a different place, different time, I, I might not have said anything. As Paul was hanging out in the basement. Kelly attempted psychic writing in order to make contact with the spirits. I'd never seen this done before. She went into this state of trance-like meditation and began making figure eights with her pen on the paper. And then she started to write words. A male spirit was apparently communicating through her as she wrote. She established that his name was Jerome, and then she attempted to find out why he was in the house. What we discovered next was shocking. I feel something behind me. How can we help you? Baby. Find baby. It says find baby. Oh my god. Okay. What what baby? Basement. Basement. Okay. Um, oh, I got goosebumps. You feel that? Yeah, it's very warm in here. My hands are sweating. Me I've, got... I, I, I've got chills going right down my body here. Okay, we got to find out about the baby. Through Kelly's writings, we learned that the baby the spirit had been referring to was his child that had been born out of wedlock and buried in the basement of the home. Maybe somebody should go in the basement. Okay. Paul's down there, isn't he? Yes. Okay. Okay. Show Paul where the baby is. Can you show Paul where the baby is? He's down there. He's there to help you. He's not there to hurt you. Great. They're actually saying, can you show Paul where the baby is? Because I'm down here. Apparently, I can hear them through the floor. The, something about a baby being buried down here. Show Paul where the baby is. Can you do that? I don't want to be shown at this moment where the baby is. Can you tell us? If you can go and show Paul. Don't show me. This is not what we thought it was. This has totally come from left field. 
It is not at all what we thought it was. This is, this is somebody that was hurt in a really bad way in a time where she, she was hurt and it was hidden. It was hidden. And that's what they're mad at. That was weird. Uh. Okay. <sighs> right. Well, that's just hunky frack and dory. I honestly expected to see one of the production crew standing outside telling me, okay, Paul, joke's on you, we got you, now let's move on to something else. It was only when I got outside that I realized that there was nobody there. Now, this was the first time in the entire evening that the door had swung open, and there was no movement, there was no wind, there was nothing. It just swung open. I have to admit, I was genuinely scared, so scared, in fact, that I was finished with the investigation in the basement. We had no idea what had happened to Paul in the basement because he waited outside in the cold so as not to disrupt Kelly and I. The house was intense with energy that night, and everything seemed centered around the fact that a baby could be buried in the basement of the house. Our digital recording devices picked up the following anomaly in the house that evening. And that's... <laughs> 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 